Hello again everyone. In this video I'll be showing you my method for making elemental bromine from potassium bromide. This reaction is extremely dangerous and is for educational purposes only. All of the reactants and products are extremely reactive and hazardous to one's health. It requires a fume hood that can pull the heavy vapors away. It cannot be performed outside. It uses concentrated acids that can burn and blind you. It uses chlorine gas that can kill you. Do not repeat under any circumstances whatsoever. Several years ago I posted a video on making bromine from sodium bromide. The apparatus was overly complex and the yield was an embarrassment. However, I never really gave up on making bromine. Over time I began trying several different approaches and reactions. Most used sodium or potassium bromide and concentrated sulfuric acid. I was always unhappy with the results and began attempting other ways to get the bromine at a higher yield. Each one of these vials represents a different method attempted with about the same amount of bromide salt used. There are many other attempts at different methods not included as their yields are about the same. These just represent major milestones. The last bunch of three was made in this video and represents my most recent method. Obviously I won't waste your time on the attempts that did not work and just show you the one that does. I began with 250 grams of potassium bromide salt in a beaker. I then added distilled water up to the 400 milliliter mark. I then placed the beaker on a hot plate and brought it to a boil, stirring often to get all the KBR to dissolve. If all of it did dissolve, I would add a little bit more until no more would dissolve thus making a saturated solution. I then placed the saturated solution in a 1 liter 2 neck round bottom flask and set up for simple distillation. In the other neck of the flask I attach a glass rod through a rubber stopper with the glass rod reaching all the way down to the bottom of the flask. To the other end of the glass rod I attach a rubber hose leading to a gas generator with about 300 grams of calcium hypochlorite in a reaction flask and 400 milliliters of 37% HCl in the sup funnel. The gas generator will produce chlorine gas that will bubble through the two neck flask. The bromine formed will then escape the flask and be condensed to a liquid in the cold condenser and then collect in a small flask under ice. The condenser is cooled by copious amounts of ice. I began by turning on the heating mantle to a medium heat. We do not wish to boil the mixture but we do want it above the boiling point of bromine. Next, I start dripping the HCl on the calcium hypochloride, forming chlorine gas. The gas then enters the reaction flask and reacts with the potassium bromide by displacing the bromine anion. Or to be more specific, chlorine enters the flask and is a stronger oxidizer than bromine. Thus, it stills an electron from the bromide anion and oxidizes it to a neutral bromine atom. Chlorine is in turn reduced to a negative chloride anion and potassium plays the role of spectator ion. Since bromine is now a neutral atom, polar water can no longer hold on to it. Thus it escapes except for a small amount that remains due to induced dipoles and other attractions. One of the nice things about this reaction is that the bubbling gives me control of the rate at which bromine is formed, allowing me to distill it over very slowly so that none is wasted by overpowering the condenser. The other nice thing is that the end of the reaction can be ascertained by the fact that once the chlorine has nothing to react with, it leaves the apparatus. In other words, if you can smell the slightest hint of chlorine, then the reaction is done. After the reaction was complete, I removed the collection flask. The bromine I collected is not pure and will have water and a small amount of dissolved chlorine in it. To remove the water, I placed the bromine I collected in a small sep funnel, being very careful of the vapors as I'm pouring. I then, very carefully, add about 60 milliliters of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid in small amounts. This is extremely dangerous. If there is a lot of water in the bromine, it will react vigorously with the acid driving up the heat and causing the bromine to go into the vapor phase, flooding the fume hood and probably the lab with poisonous vapor. This has never happened to me, 
but seems likely to happen if one is not careful. I constantly test the set funnel for heat while shaking and venting often. After shaking, the set funnel is clamped in a stand and the two layers are allowed to form. This takes some time, about an hour. When done, you'll have a sulfuric and water upper layer and a bromine bottom layer. The bottom layer is then removed into a clean beaker. Bromine is notorious for escaping its container, so I place my bromine in amples for long-term storage. The only real problem is getting the bromine in such a small opening of the ample. I found that a pasture pipette works the best. However, for this video, I just poured the bromine in the vials. Before we seal them up, we can test them for purity by placing a small drop of our product on a watch glass and letting it evaporate. If nothing is left, we can assume that the bromine has no solid impurities in it. However, it will still have a small amount of chlorine in it. This can be removed by distilling it over concentrated sulfuric acid. As you can see, no residue remains. Thus, we can conclude that the bromine is reasonably pure. After I recorded the mass of each file and subtracted the mask of an empty ample, I then took a torch and very carefully heated and sealed the tops of the vials. This will ensure that there is no loss of bromine over time. When I was done, I found that I had collected 142.4 grams of bromine, giving me about an 85% of the theoretical yield. This is about as good as I feel I can get with the tools that I have. Some loss occurs as some bromine is trapped in the water and some was lost due to vaporization. I also lost a small amount while pouring the bromine in the vials. If you have a better method for making bromine, please post a video response on your method. Okay, an important note. My videos are for entertainment. By this I mean they are not exhaustive. Like anyone placing a chemistry video on YouTube, I have to weigh keeping the video interesting with safety and completeness. Also, I try to keep my video short as most people do not want to see a 30 minute video made up of 20 minutes worth of safety info. This is why at the beginning I ask that this experiment not be repeated. It's not because I feel no one is as competent as I am, nothing can be further from the truth. It's because to make the video interesting, large parts had to be removed. For example, in this scene where I'm shaking the bromine and acid, I'm wearing a full face shield, working in a fume hood, Behind the white styrofoam board is a five gallon bucket iced down for me to dump the step funnel in in case things get out of hand. Off camera is another five gallon bucket of water that I can drench myself off in if the bromine and acid were to spray all over me. I have a clear path to an exit out of my lab. My lab is not attached to my house and is in fact hundreds of feet away. This is all very important information. It's also very boring to listen to if placed in the scene. So the easiest thing to do is say that it's for entertainment, because that's really what it's for. Thanks for watching.